good morning uh, now i'll show you one uh, important male uh, viscera and that viscera is the testis and the attached spermatic cord then what are the parts of the testis it is having two poles one is upper pole one is lower pole and two borders this is anterior border which is convex and one posterior border we cannot see the posterior border properly because of the attachment of the spermatic cord and two surfaces one is medial surface one is lateral surface so two poles two borders and two surfaces then what is the length breadth and the anteroposterior diameter the breadth is about this one is a breadth 2 to 3 cm and the anteroposterior diameter this one it is 3 to 4 cm and the length this is the length upper pole to lower pole it is about 4 to 5 cm 2 3 breadth 3 4 anteroposterior 4 5 is the length then what is this this is the one of the coverings of testis if you are asked what are the covering of testis your answer will be there are three coverings of testis from outside inwards tunica vaginalis which is having again two layers this is a visceral layer because of this this surface looks glistening and this is the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis the visceral layer reflected from the posterior side and then becomes parietal layer forming a sac or cavity between the visceral and parietal layer so hydrocell is the accumulation of excess fluid between the visceral and parietal layer of tunica vaginalis now after that second layer is the tunica albuginea this layer it enters into the testis to the posterior border and forming the mediastinum testis and deep to it another vascular layer called tunica vasculosa so there are three layers of three coverings of testis tunica vaginalis which is having two layers again visceral parietal then tunica albuginea which looks almost white so the name is tunica albuginea albus means white and deep to east is the tunica vasculosa because it contains the blood vessels so it is tunica vasculosa then come to the this part these structures what is this this is called epididymis the epididymis is attached at the upper pole of the testis can you see there are efferent ductules about 12 in number this efferent ductules from the testis upper pole of testis it forms the head of the epididymis so this is head attached to the upper pole then it becomes the body this is the body of the epididymis this one this body then it turns here and going upwards as the vas deferens so this lower part is called the tail of the epididymis so epididymis having three parts head body and tail and this epididymis it lies on the posterolateral part of the testis and this this space this group is called the sinus of epididymis so sinus of epididymis will be on the postlateral side of the testis now we know the position of the epididymis and sinus of epididymis which will be on the postlateral side now how to hold it the testis in anagonal position on the palm of the hand you rest this testis and epididymis this is spermatic cord upwards from the posterior border of the testis and the lower pole to some extent looking or directing downwards and forwards this is downwards this is forwards so downwards and forwards and the sinus of epididymis it will be on the lateral side rather postlateral side so this is the anatomical position of the testis with the spermatic cord and this is the testis of right side and if you are asked what is the average volume of the testis it is about 15 to 25 ml and the weight of the testis this one how much it weighs it is about 12 to 20 grams so now we know all the dimension length breadth thickness weight and the volume of the testis secondly if you are asked what is this this is spermatic cord what is the average length of spermatic cord it is about 
7 to 8 centimeter. It starts at the level of deep inguinal ring. So, extends from the deep inguinal ring through the inguinal canal, then superficial inguinal ring, then up to the posterior border of the testis, this one, posterior border testis. Then what are the coverings of this spermatic cord? There are three main coverings of spermatic cord from outside inwards, one is external spermatic fossa, which is derived from the appendages of external oblique muscle. Then deep to this is the cremesteric fossa, which is derived from internal oblique. And innermost covering of the spermatic cord is the internal spermatic fossa, which is derived from fossa transversalis. So, there are three coverings, external spermatic fossa, cremesteric fossa and internal spermatic fossa. Then what are the contents or structures within this spermatic cord? The main structure is the vas deferens. You know I told you the vas deferens is nothing but the continuation from the tail of the epididymis and the vas deferens open inside the prostatic urethra after joining with the seminal vesicle and forming the ejaculatory duct. And this uh, vas deferens, it enters through the superficial inguinal ring, then inguinal canal, then deep ring, they need joins with the seminal vesicle near its termination. And other than vas deferens, you will get the artery to vas, then you will get the testicular artery, testicular vein, testicular lymphatics, cremesteric muscle and also the fatty tissue, irregular tissue. So, all these things you will get inside this spermatic cord and all are the content of spinal cord. So, finally, I am showing you once again how to hold the spermatic cord and the testis epidermis in angular position.